Hi guys, welcome to ASFN. Today I'm going to be doing a drone bait. In other words, it's a very big bait that they use for drone fishing, but you can still throw it if you'd like. Uh, what we require, and I've got it here, is a drone trace, um, some number 19 toothproof wire. Very important. I'm going to make a dangle out of it. Uh, round nose pliers, a knife, chocker hammer, dangle puller, and a pair of side cutters. Let's start this one. You can sit here. Stay. Okay. Let's quickly make one of these heavy duty dangles. And number 19 wire, guys, is not something Mickey Mouse to play with. It's thick. So let's just quickly cut a piece there. It goes there. Start off by making our loop for the actual dangle itself. Our round nose pliers always works well. And we just do a haywire twist. Two, three, four. 90 degrees. And we wrap it around three or four times. Once, twice, three, four times. And all we're going to do now is just bend this back to form a little hook for our bait. Like so. Cut it off. Measure the length we want to make it. Very important. Don't want it longer than that, so I'm going to take it this side. There we go. Two, three. And we just carry on turning it around four times. Four times, like that. And spin it off at 90 degrees. If you hold it in your fingers, it should break quite easily. Okay, so there is our dangle. Yellow tail, yeah, which is frozen, absolutely solid. I took it out about five minutes ago. Um, all I want to do is just break that down a little bit, make it a little bit more pointed. Uh, do I have another pair of flies here? Hold on a second. There we go. So what I'm doing is just making more of a point in it. That's all I'm trying to do. There we go, perfect. Our drone trace. There we go. There we go. Okay, so very basic, uh, 250 pound wire with our knot that will go whichever way you want to do it to the drone, it's up to you. Let's cut off this bit here. And there's obviously our tuna circle look, heavy duty. And that looks like about a 12 -0 or 13 -0. It could even be a 14 -0. It's quite big. Just want to make sure everything fits together before I start work. Yeah, perfect. Okay. There we go. Leave our drone trace there. Stand still. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is just measure out where I need to do the cutting. So I'm going to cut there and I'm going to cut about here. Okay. And what I'm going to do, if I can, actually get this down. Like I said it's frozen like a rock. Be very careful with it. going quite nicely okay. 
Okay, there we go. Oh. Okay, so there's our yellow tail that we've cut. I'm just going to trim it down, try and expose a lot more of the actual flesh. So all I'm trying to do is just trim it as best as I can, just to give it a bit more shape. It's actually easier for a grey shark, a raggy, a big flat fish to actually inhale a round bait than a long fat bait. There we go. Trying to expose as much of the flesh as I can. Okay. Next one is just to measure where it's going to go. There. Again, this is a, a bait that we would use if you're trying to get a bite very quickly. Like I say, we're trying to get as much blood into the water as quickly as we can. But allowing that blood and flavor out slowly. So we're going to put cutlets around it. We're going to make it nice and big and round. But this part of it is still going to be frozen. And we're going to allow the, the blood to come out as quick as possible. And also making the bait quite a soft bait for fish to to eat. All I'm trying to do is take off as much of the skin as I can. So there's our yellow tail, our skinless yellow tail. We'll just leave him there for a couple of minutes. We're going to take a couple of cutlets of uh, yellow tail. Um, and like I said, we're not going to make them too, too thin. The problem I have is trying to cut through it. We just carry on going. Okay, there's one piece done. And like I said, this bait is frozen. And all I'm doing is just cutting some fillets out of it now. Just turning it around. And we'll just carry on working through this bait like this until we get all the way through it. Now all we're trying to do is cut some fillets out here. Okay, that's better. Another side. Okay. 
Okay, so now we've got some big fillets here. I just want to get rid of the backbone there. Just want to neaten up this bait a bit. Nice and round. And all I'm trying to do is make it about the same size as that bait there. That's all I'm trying to do. Okay. Uh. Okay guys, basically what I've done is I've got my two cutlets and my two fillets. Now all I'm going to try and do, and like I said, this bait, this yellow tail is frozen like a rock, is try and take off the skin. There we go. So just basically taking the skin off of the yellow tail, exposing as much of that flesh as I can. Getting rid of any hard parts. Now that's basically our yellow tail mm. fillets. Now comes the difficult part, especially with the bait being so frozen, is to cut basically a softer cutlet out of it. Just be careful when you're doing this, guys. So there's one piece, there's another piece. got two four lovely cutlets. Let's make this one a bit smaller. Go to there and just make sure that that one is also a little bit thinner. Done. Okay. Very simple. There we go. Now we can start cottoning up the whole trace. Dangle puller and our skinned yellow tail. Easiest way is to go straight through the nose, which is right there. And that should be about there. There we go. And that, if I pull it. Okay, so that arm over there of the dangle sits up in the top, stops it from coming off. There is our dangle. So, what are we doing? Just going through there, like so. Very simple, very easy. Take our thick latex cotton. Where is she hiding? She knows I like it. Now she hides it. There we go. Okay, there we go.
The reason we use the thick latex cotton for this is so that as this bait starts defrosting in the water, the thick latex cotton squeezes the bait, forcing all the smell, blood, flavor out of the actual bait. There we go. And don't be afraid of it, guys. Put as much latex on it as you want. Because the fish that you're feeding for, or angling for, or trying to catch, doesn't worry about a little bit of cotton. Generally, they're 100 kilo fish that you're trying to catch. So there we go. Okay, so we've got a lot of cotton there. Put this one down. I'm going to take my trucker hammer and lightly soften the yellow tail. Okay, this yellow tail is frozen. Okay, there we go. Take a lovely yellow tail and now cotton it up. We've got two big cutlets, thick cutlets over here. And again, like I said, a lot of cotton, guys. Stops the crabs from getting hold of it. Um, it squeezes all the juices and flavors out into the water. So don't be afraid of the cotton. Let me just form this quickly a little bit better. Okay. The skin side, we're going to leave outwards. The hard inside is the one that we're actually going to soften. Okay, lovely. And we just soften it up so that the cotton actually binds on it a lot better. Done. Okay, here we go. Uh, that's the skin one, and I think that's the skin one. Okay, so those two are going to be our last two baits that we actually put on. Form this nicely. And now it's becoming a real rugby ball kind of bait. And we go up over the the shank around the actual what's his name uh, bulb of the hook over here this area quite a few times it just stops the bait from being pulled off of the actual circle hook as well as the dangle the dangles there just basically to hold the bait in place so when the fish bites that you aren't covering that part of it there which is very very important when it comes to using circle hooks the loop is of no real, um, what's his name, but we just put it on anyway. Um, that is very important, that little back hook there is the important part of this whole thing. Because that's what actually holds it from coming off. That and of course, this. 
over here that we're doing. We're just crisscrossing it over. That just prevents it from being pulled off. The bait is oozing nicely here. Okay. Now that's the oil side. That's the inside part of it. What we're going to do with these two pieces is make sure that it lies around it. That oil is a bit protected. The small fish are going to actually start feeding on it. And then the oil from that part of it will be released a little bit later on. Um, giving it about 15 minutes hopefully in the water before the fish actually come and feed on it. It's nice. You can manipulate this bait so nicely into a ball. Okay, next one. You can see how the blood's already been pushed through this whole bait. And there we go guys, there is a drone bait fit for a king. The hook, like I said, has got nothing in its way to prevent the fish shark skate from actually getting hooked. And with that cotton there, it actually stops it, prevents it from coming off completely. And if you pull as hard as you want on this, it doesn't come off or out. So if a fish grabs it and pulls off, perfect. It's not going to pull it off the hook at all. It's a nice clean bait, lots of blood, lots of smell. I'm just going to leave it here for a, about two to three minutes. And we'll just have a look what it looks like in about two to three minutes. Remember when it goes into the water, this whole, all the smell and blood is just going to dissipate into the water. And as the cotton contracts on it, more blood is going to come out. The little fish are going to come around and feed on it. There's a lot of cotton here, so the crabs don't get to it too easily or too quickly. And yeah, as long as it stays in the water for half an hour, 45 minutes, you've got a good chance of getting a decent sized fish. Quick, easy, just remember be very careful with a frozen bait when actually doing this. Good luck, tight lines.